السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين This is an ayah in Surah Al-Hashr in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what it means. Like the shaytan, when he says to the man, disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the man disbelieved in Allah, the shaytan turned himself away from him and he said to him, I am innocent from you. I declare my innocence from your actions and your deeds. I fear Allah, the Lord of the world. This ayah, subhanAllah, when we read it for the first time, we may understand that the shaitan, in his misguidance and misleading of the people, will just take them from their hands and make them disbelieve or make them commit sins, or make mistakes, and the people will listen to him right away. People are always smart, and they are intelligent, and they will not do that. So the shaitan will not act this way with the people. The ayah says, إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ اكْفُرُ When he says to the man, or when he said to the man, disbelieve, and then when the man disbelieved. But before telling the man to disbelieve, the shaitan will follow so many steps and will take it gradually and will not do it surprisingly. If he takes somebody or whispers to someone to go and commit a crime, the person might think before doing that, and might refrain from doing it. But the shaitan will make introductions, will pave the way and the road for the person to go step by step, step by step, until he reaches his goal and his aim. And he will never give up because this is his job. This is his um, task to do this. So he will never stop. And that's why we are in continuous fight against our main enemy, the enemy which is the shaitan. As Allah states clearly in the Quran, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوًّا مُبِينًا Indeed, the shaitan is an open enemy to the human beings. And if the shaitan fails in his steps, to take the man gradually, to make him or her commit the crime, he will follow another tactic. And that is opening many gates of goodness for this person. So the person will think that he is doing something good, but there is something evil, something bad behind what he is doing. And the shaitan will lead him from that direction and encouraging the person to follow these steps until he makes him commit the crime or fall into the major sin. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the shaitan as an enemy and warn us against him, he said, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. He didn't say, لا تتبعوا الشيطان. Allah did not say, do not follow the shaitan. He said, do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Because the footsteps of the shaitan seem in the, seem in the beginning that everything is okay. And the person is not doing something wrong. And he will, every step that he takes in that direction, he will convince himself <clears throat> that I am not doing something wrong. There's nothing wrong to do this. Nothing wrong to do this. Until he reaches the point when he falls into the major sin, he will be even convinced that there's nothing wrong with doing this. 
Subhanallah, these are the steps of the shaitan. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فَاحِشَةً وَسَاءَ سَبِيلًا Do not approach zina because it is an indecent act and it is an evil path. Allah did not say do not commit zina, but he says do not approach it. Meaning that avoid the steps, the actions, the relationships, even the talks, the conversations, the messages, the phone calls, whatever might at the end lead to that crime. Avoid it from the beginning. Blocking the means which is in Islam known as saddu dharai'ah. Blocking all these means of the shaitan. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regard to this specific ayah from Surah Al-Hashr. كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كفر. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated a story regarding this ayah from the past nation. He gives us a story explaining to us how the shaitan will lead the person to the disbelief without this person realizing it and without this person's understanding what he is going to do. He narrated this story about <clears throat> this man that used to be very pious, righteous, good person to the point that his, he secluded himself from his people he started worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in his room away from his city because he thought that his people were not up to his standard of righteousness and piety and he was really pious and righteous person and when the prophet sallallahu alaihi mentioned about this man that he was very good pious and righteous person it means that no single person is immune from the shaitan it doesn't matter how pious and how righteous the person is if that person does not take the proper precautions to protect himself against the shaitan, then he might end up falling into the traps of the shaitan without realizing it. It doesn't matter how close he is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it might happen to anyone. Look at the Prophet sallallahu and how many times he used to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan. Look at the Prophet sallallahu and see how many times he used to seek Allah's forgiveness. Look at the Prophet ﷺ and see how many times he used to ask Allah for the repentance. Look at the Prophet ﷺ and see how many times he used to say, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah, the one, who the one who changes the hearts, affirm my heart in your religion. So there is no one that is immune from the enmity of the shaitan. And sometimes the shaitan gives this feeling to some people that I am good. There is no way that I'm going to be misguided. There's no way that I'm going to be misled by the shaitan. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about this man that he was so pious, righteous, took himself away from his people because their actions were not good. And he started worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone by himself. And what happened in that city, there used to be three brothers and they had one sister. And the three brothers, it was their turn to go to jihad, all of them together. And their sister had no one to take care of her. They look around the city to find so a family or to find someone to trust them with their sister, but they didn't find anyone. Because that city, as the man described it, it was not a good city. The people were not good. So these three brothers had no trust in anyone to leave their sister with them. And that's why they ended up going to this pious, righteous man, asking him to take their sister with him. And he refused completely in the beginning, of course. He said, no way. I cannot stay in one place by myself alone with the women. That's not going to happen. He refused so many times. They went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then eventually they said to him, if you do not be responsible for our sister, you will be responsible before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she is going to be lost. And we have no one to take care of her. And then the man had no option except to accept that. But on one main condition, he said, 
there's no way that she is going to stay with me or even close to me. If you want me to take care of her, you have to build her a place far away from me. And I will just keep an eye on her. I will just uh, deliver the food to her and I will just keep an eye on her. She is in her place, I'm in my place, and we're not talking to each other. They agreed on that and they did this. And the man started giving the food, just going to the door of her place and putting the food there and leaving without saying a word, even without saying Assalamu Alaikum. And he continued doing this for months and months and everything is perfectly fine. She used to come out after he leaves, take the food, he's in his place and she is in her place. Until one day, now the shaitan started whispering to him. And he said to him, now he's opening to him the gates of goodness. That's exactly what, what happens when the person start building a relationship. There's nothing wrong to sit in this library, on this place with your friend so and so, and study, have this conversation, and then start it from there. So the shaitan started talking to him uh, from this perspective, he said, this lady did not hear a voice of a human being for a long time. How about when you take the food, just wait a little bit at the door until she comes out and just say, Salaamu Alaikum. Don't say anything else. Just say, Salaamu Alaikum and leave. And the man said, there's nothing wrong with that. And he started doing this. He thought saying, Salaamu Alaikum, there's no problem with that. And there's no problem to say, Salaamu Alaikum to a sister and she would reply to the Salaam. And as some people misunderstand, then they say the voice of the woman is awra, which is not awra. That's not, there's no hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says that. So the man started saying, Assalamu Alaikum. She replied to the Islam, take the food, enter, and he leaves. By the way, this process or this action continue for months. By the way, when I mentioned in the beginning, the shaitan is always patient until he makes the person falls in his, in his trap. He will never give up. And the man continued doing this for a long time until one day now it is going up to the next level. The shaitan whispers to him and he said to him, you know, this lady did not eat with anyone for a long time. How about if you just sit and eat with her? There's no problem, just eat and leave. And he started doing that, eating with her until one day the big thing happened and he had a relationship with her. He committed zina with her. After being a pious, righteous person, secluding himself away from the people, now he is getting involved in the most evil crime ever that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran as fahisha and sa'a sabila, which is indecent action and an evil path. The man, after doing this, she became pregnant and she had given birth to a baby. Now he got stuck and he doesn't know what to do. That is going to be a big problem for him when her brothers come back. Now the shaitan came to him with another plan to get rid of his crime. And that's what happened so many people that they want to get rid of their crimes and they corrected the mistake by a bigger mistake. So the man, the shaitan, uh, whispered to him and told him, you know, the best way is to just to take this crime away. How do you do that? Just to kill the baby and as if nothing happened. And he did that, killed the baby and buried him. Now two crimes are committed. The crime of zina and the crime of killing an innocent person. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Do not kill the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits to be killed. Do not kill the innocent people. And the man after killing her baby, the shaitan whispers to him and said, do you think that she is going to be silent? She is not going to tell her brothers about what happened? What is the next solution? What should I do? Well then kill her. And when they come, just tell them she died. He did that, buried her. And then the brothers came. After they came, they asked him about their sister. And he said to them, she died. And he took them to her grave. They believed him, of course. They didn't have any doubt about him. Plus, everything up to this point is absolutely fine. They went to the grave. They made dua. They prayed for the sister. Everything is fine. And they left. Now the shaitan will stop at this point 
No, the man already committed three crimes and that's enough for him to take him straight to the fire. And the shaitan seems to be like achieving his goal, but he will not be satisfied until he take the person to the lowest level that he could take him to. And this is the level of the disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still the man committed three crimes, but he might repent one day. He might fix his problem. He might correct himself. He might go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows how to do it. The shaitan said, that doesn't work. I am not going to waste all these actions and all these work for all these months just for three crimes. He was not happy with three crimes. This man has to commit the biggest crime ever. And the shaitan went to the brothers of this lady in their dream. He went to the eldest one and told him exactly what happened in his dream. And the man saw the dream. He, the shaitan went to the second brother in the same night in the dream and told him the same exact story. To the third one and told him the same exact story. When they woke up in the morning, they are talking to each other. And the elder brother is telling them, you know, I had seen last night a very strange dream. I don't know what's that. It might be just um, a bad dream from the shaitan. The second brother asked him, what did you see? Such and such and such. Third brother, I had seen the same thing. Now, when the three brothers had seen the same dream at the same time, the same night, same exact details, now they said there's something wrong. We had to investigate it. They went to the man and asked him. And they pushed the man. They pressured him until he admitted it that he killed their sister and killed her baby. He took them to the grave. He dug the grave and they found their sister killed. And next to her is her baby. Subhanallah. Now, the punishment for this crime at that time was to crucify the person for three days first before killing him, before retaliation, before the qisas. That was the punishment at, during these days. Now, they crucified the person, getting him ready to be retaliated, uh, to be killed because he had committed all these crimes and killed the two people. So he deserved this big punishment. And now at this point, the shaitan came to him in the form of a man. The shaitan used to appear in the past in the form of some people or form of men to the people. And he came to him in the form of a man and he talked to him and he said, do you know me? He said, no. He said, I am the one who had led you all the way until you reach this place. Do you know who am I? He said, no. He said, I'm the shaitan. The man said to him, may Allah's curse be upon you. Why did you do that? He said, I did it because I want you to reach this place and to do what I am going to tell you to do. He said what? He said, by the way, I'm the only one that will save you from this place if you follow me. Now the man without thinking, he just want to escape, to run away from his crime. He does not want to be punished. He said, what should I do? He said, you should disbelieve in Allah and make sujood for me. If you do that, I will save you from this place and you will be free. The man without thinking disbelieved in Allah and made sujood for the shaitan. And until this point when he did that, the shaitan said to him, Inni bari umminka, inni akhafullah rabbal alameen. I am innocent from you. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the words. See brothers and sisters, subhanallah, how did it start? It started with what? It started with just a very simple thing that no person will ever imagine that this man will commit all these crimes just with this kind of, be of, of start. Subhanallah al -Azim. Sometimes we do things, we do certain things and we think that it is not going to lead to the crime. It is not going to lead to the sin. It is not going to lead to the mistake. But be extra cautious and be always be careful and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every chat, in every post on the Facebook, in everything that we have on the social media, in every relationship, in every kind of friend that we add and we request a friendship. Be extra cautious of that because these are the first steps of the shaitan that lead to so many bad things. 
and we see and we hear nowadays about all the bad things that are happening because of all those communications and all these chats and how many families have been disunited, how many divorces happens. So many things happen because of that. And these are the first steps. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tattabi'u khutuwaat al-shaytan wa may yattabi'u khutuwaat al-shaytan فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Who believers do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan and whoever follows the footsteps of the shaytan he commands the people with the fahsha with the indecent actions and the munkar he commands يَأْمُرُ and if the command comes from the shaytan it's not like actually a command it's whispering until it leads the person to do it unwillingly as if it is a command from the shaytan and that will teach also will teach us also a lesson never ever underestimate a sin or a mistake never ever say that this is just a minor thing this is just a something small never ever do that always think the believer as being described that the believer when he commits even a minor sin makes him a small mistake he feels as if there is a mountain that's going to collapse on him and the hypocrite the munafiq will feel about the sin as if it is a fly that falls in his face and he just pushing it away or flies it away. Subhanallah. كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان اكفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يقينا وساوس الشيطان ومكائد الشيطان وخطوات الشيطان اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ومن العمل ما ترضى برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا واشرح صدورنا وبلغنا مما يرضيك آملنا اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والتقى ونسألك العفاف وال الغنى ونسألك علما ينفع ونسألك رزقا واسعا ونسألك عملا متقبلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خير